Thank you, Chair, and, and thank you for your uh, wise and sober uh, management of this challenging topic. And thank you to all the ministers who have traveled a long way on very short notice to attend this special permanent council, uh, and to those ministers who are participating virtually. They're doing so because they realize the critical moment Venezuela, a founding member of the Organization of American States, faces in the wake of its presidential election last Sunday. They have stressed that this moment and this challenge goes to the core of one of our central missions here at the OAS, protecting and defending democracy. Mr. Chair, Venezuelans once again showed on Sunday how determined they remain after years of challenges and setbacks to recover their democratic freedoms. Over 12 million voters went to the polls to participate in presidential elections that offered the Venezuelan people for the first time in years a real choice in their country, a real opportunity to move beyond its long-running crises. Despite the many obstacles that many colleagues here have already recounted, the Venezuelan people still turned out in great numbers to exercise their right to vote and to express their aspirations for a more democratic, prosperous, and stable future. We commend their courage and commitment to participate peacefully in the, in the face of intense repression and adversity. On Sunday evening, Venezuelans' hopes for their election began to dim amid widespread reports of opposition poll party poll watchers being expelled from voting centers as votes were being tallied, among other irregularities. And then, after midnight, the Maduro-controlled National Electoral Council declared Nicolas Maduro the winner of the presidential election without releasing any detailed data or the precinct level vote counts or actas as they have all that have always accompanied the CNE's election result announcements in the past. The partial results the CNE announced claiming they received 80% of actas ran completely contrary to pre-election polls, exit polls from the day of the election, multiple quick counts prepared by experienced domestic and international election observers, as well as the overall assessment of the Carter Center. All of these assessments clearly indicated Edmundo Gonzalez Arrutia received millions more votes than Nicolas Maduro. Until last Sunday night, the CNE and Maduro supporters boasted that they had one of the most foolproof and auditable election systems in the world. Then as polls closed, Venezuelans, election observers, and the international community immediately began demanding the CNE publish the results per precinct based on the tally sheets or actas in accordance with the CNE's own regulations. Three days after the election, the CNE, Maduro, and his representatives have not shared any such data or evidence despite their own promise to do so. The period to do so under Venezuelan law has now expired. Well, why haven't they? The answer appears to be clear. Either they know the real results, prove that Edmundo, Edmundo Gonzalez clearly won the election, so they don't want to share the results, or they know that the real results prove that Edmundo Gonzalez clearly won the election, and Maduro CNE needs time to prepare falsified results to back their false assertion. The Maduro side has failed to produce any evidence of their assertion that foreign computer hackers or power failures have made it impossible to produce the official results nearly three days later. Venezuelan citizens supporting opposing candidates, however, have provided the best picture we have on what really happened. On election night, just as they have done in past elections, in adherence with Venezuela's electoral law, Witnesses at polling tables throughout Venezuela collected electronic vote ta totals via the QR codes produced by the CNE voting machines, as well as physical copies of each tally sheet or acta. These are real Venezuelan votes. 
In the following hours and days, civil society organizations and the opposition compiled this detailed physical evidence, the entirety of which the opposition and others have publicly posted on the internet to include scans of the paper tally sheets or actas. As of yesterday, 24,045 of these actas obtained at each precinct had been uploaded to the internet, representing more than 80% of the 30,016 voting tables in Venezuela and more than 10.5 million of the votes cast on July 28th. The tabulation of these detailed results clearly show an irrefutable result. Edmundo Gonzalez won with 67% of these votes compared to 30% for Maduro, a margin of victory for Gonzalez of 39 million votes and 37 percentage, sorry, 3.9 million votes and 37 percentage points. Simply put, there are not enough votes in remaining tally sheets or actas to overcome such a deficit. The CNE and Maduro's own poll watchers always had the same electronic data and their own copies of the same actas, but have chosen not to share them. Given the actual results, their reason for refusing to share them is obvious. With the irrefutable evidence based on the actas, everyone can see it is clear that Armando Gonzalez Arrutia defeated Nicolas Maduro by millions of votes. This is not a projection. Even if Maduro won 100% of the votes in the less than 20% of the actas that remain to be published, he could not surpass Gonzalez's vote total thus far. Moreover, as others have cited, last night the Carter Center confirmed what millions of Venezuelans already knew. The election did not meet international standards of electoral integrity and cannot be considered democratic rendering the CNE's announcement meaningless. So the actual result of, guns, of Venezuela's presidential election is clear for all in Venezuela and around the world to see. Instead of recognizing the real election results or uh, sharing detailed election uh, details themselves as Venezuelan civil society, the international community have requested for days, Maduro and his representatives have responded by launching political persecution of opposition members and use of force against peaceful Venezuelan demonstrators, the vast majority of whom are only insisting on electoral transparency and integrity. Frustrated Venezuelans have understandably taken to the streets to protest this naked act of election tampering. According to the NGO Foro Penal, there have been 11 deaths and 429 politically motivated arrests since the election. We call on all sides to reject violence and that all protests must be done peacefully. As we sit here today, Dozens of opposition campaign workers are already in prison, and there are warrants out for the arrest of presidential candidate Edmundo Gonzalez Arrutia and opposition leader Maria Karina Machado, among others. Arrests of these leaders will not only threaten their well-being and violate their fundamental rights, they will also violate the rights of all Venezuelans to freely choose their leaders and take us even further away from a peaceful, sustainable solution to ease the long-standing su suffering of the people of Venezuela. Those who are in prison must be released, and this massive political repression must cease. Venezuelans' anger and frustration are understandable and should be addressed through greater transparency rather than repression. Mr. Chairman, colleagues, the international community is watching developments in Venezuela closely. The international community, and dare I say history, is watching us here at the OAS today. Millions of Venezuelans risking their lives and well-being for a better future are watching us here today. Our statements and actions today are a testament to the strength of our commitment to democracy and to rule of law, and ultimately to the strength of the inter-American system. But how can we believe Maduro's comments of this afternoon? At one moment, he says they have 100% of the actas, and then he says they cannot release them due to a cyber attack. Uh, 
he and his representatives could still release all the information at the precinct level that supports their arguments, but they won't. In our own countries, we would demand transparency. Venezuelans have waited enough, waited long enough for their true voices to be heard. Maduro and his representatives must recognize the actual results of the election they implemented and participated in. Given the overwhelming evidence obtained by documented proof of millions of votes cast, Maduro and his representatives should recognize Edmundo Gonzalez Arrutia as the winner of the July 28th presidential election. Given the clear evidence, the world's government should also acknowledge Edmundo Gonzalez's overwhelming electoral victory. Those that fail to do so are only enabling Maduro and his representatives attempt at massive fraud and disregard for the rule of law and democratic principles. Mr. Chairman, it pains me to address Maduro's deeply disturbing decision to expel diplomats from Argentina, Chile, Costa Rica, Peru, Panama, the Dominican Republic, and Uruguay from Venezuela because their governments insisted on electoral transparency. I regret that our diplomatic colleagues must suffer this kind of disrespectful treatment and intolerance and disdain for constructive diplomatic engagement and expression. But this must not weaken our resolve in pursuing principled solutions that will, in the long run, strengthen relations between our nations. Mr. Chairman, we must continue to stand with the Venezuelan people and with democracy in Venezuela. We will continue to use diplomacy and coordinated actions with the international community to ensure respect for the wishes of the Venezuelan people as expressed at the ballot box. And we will continue to call for dialogue and transparency rather than violence and repression against the opposition, civil society, and those Venezuelans who are peacefully demanding that their rights be respected. With the support of the international community, the Venezuelan people can move toward a better future, a more democratic path, one with economic recovery, political stability, and prosperity for Venezuelans. We urge this body to remain seized with the situation, and we support the Venezuelan people at this critical moment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much.